Subscribers to New Orleans Stop Football get all of our exclusive news and analysis, all of our features, all of our writing, a members-only podcast every week, and the walkthrough video, which comes out once a week on our website. Make sure you sign up today. Use the code NOF to save 20% off your first payment. All right. We've got a great show for you guys today. We're coming to you from PJ's on Airline Highway. And if you need to get up here, make sure you hit up Matt Bowers. You buy a car from him. He's got the Ford dealership. I'm on Veterans Memorial Boulevard, but he has all kinds of different dealerships, all kinds of different locations, best prices, best customer care, all that. So he'll make sure to get you right and get you into the right car today. Uh, We're going to talk about everything going on with the Saints. We're going to get you set for the owners meetings this week. We're going to talk a little bit more about the injury situations and what the Saints need to get right. So stick with us right through this quick word from our great sponsors. The New Orleans Dot Football Show is proudly presented by PJ's Coffee. PJ's Coffee has some of the best drinks that you can find. They have locations all over the city. They have pastries and everything else you need to get your day started. So go check them out. Are you looking for the perfect engagement ring? Look no further than Friend & Company Fine Jewelers' new engagement salon. This new area houses a wide selection of engagement rings to choose from in all cuts, sizes, and colors. Their experienced staff offer five-star customer care to help you find the perfect ring to express your love. Visit their new engagement salon today. Friend and Company Fine Jewelers, the perfect ring for the perfect moment and also for the perfect person. 7713 Maple Street between Adams and Burdett Street. 504-866-5433. Friend and Company Fine Jewelers. Check them out at friendandcompany.com. Hard Hide Punch Tool Strawberry Whiskey is an 86 proof blend of aged wheat bourbon, American light whiskey, and fresh punch tool strawberries. Blended in New Orleans, it is not for the thin skinned. Look for it in your favorite stores, bars, and restaurants. New Orleans Stop Football is proud to be sponsored by Firehouse Subs. Make sure you check out their location on Veterans Boulevard. All right, let's get into the show. Welcome back to PJ's Coffee. Let's get into our lead topic presented by Friend and Company Fine Jewelers, the official jewelers of the New Orleans Saints. Friend and Company has a great engagement salon, so make sure you go there and check it out if you're planning on popping the question of that special someone. They got rings in all sizes, all shapes, all carrots. They'll take care of you, get you what you need. And while you're there, make sure you check out their Florida Lead necklace and earrings that are on your screen. The earrings are priced at $1,100, and the necklace is $1,350. Tell them that NOF sent you. All right, so Chase Young's availability has been kind of the topic of the week. He obviously is getting that next operation after signing with the team. And it kind of got us to thinking a little bit, if you could guarantee 17 games from one player on the team, who would be the most important player? Who would maybe be some of the lesser players? Who would fit through 1 through 10? We kind of did a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of a draft going back and forth. Who we're going to select, why, and kind of go through it. Um, So if you could pick one guy, 17 games, you can't say, like, He's going to get better. It's the last time we right. saw him. So we can't say yeah. Trevor can, Penning, 17 all-pro level games. So. Yeah, or like <laughs> if he's healthy, like you'll see yeah. it. No, like yeah. the last version of him that we saw is a version that we're, yeah. we're drafting with. So you can go first. Yep. We'll do a snake draft. I'll get to the next two. I mean, I think there's a right answer for number one, and I'm not going with it. Um, I'll let you get to the quarterback soon because the season is probably lost if they don't have their quarterback. But I can't help but pick Marshawn Lattimore first for this one because it would just change my outlook on this team so much to know that he is going to play all 17 games with the Saints this year. That means he's here. That means he's hopefully relatively happy or at least they've mended whatever uh, rift there might be uh, so that he's committed to the team. And it means he's healthy for the first time in three years. And if you told me I was getting 17 games for Marshawn Lattimore this year, I'm predicting the Saints to win the division and go to the playoffs. Um, He's probably the best player on the team. He makes the entire defense better. It makes you feel better about the season if he's part of it. Um, So he's number one on my list for that reason. Yeah, I mean, I think the number one for me – even if I had the first pick, I, I would have took Carr. Yeah. It's not yeah. because – makes it, perfect it's because, sense. Like, if Marshawn gets hurt, you still got Paulson and Alante, like, so you might be okay there. If Derek Carr gets hurt, you got Jake Hayner and Nathan Peterman. Yeah. So it's not no, even you, just, you're making the right choice. Not, it's not even <laughs> just that he's the quarterback. It's the drop-off. Like, yeah. last yes. year's team, I might have went a different type of way because you got Jameis Winston there, and, and it might be fine um, if you lose Carr. But I, I think you have to take him number one because yeah. the drop-off is just so significant, and that plays into my next pick too. I think going with Ramchek here um, yep. is something you got to do because they're so thin at tackle. If you take him out of the mix, I don't know how you're filling everything. So I think 
I think for me, those are the two guys that I need healthy the whole entire season. I, I think if I was ranking them, I think Marshawn probably would have been my my third just because yeah, I feel like th- there's a way around it. But I think the upside with him is so much greater. But, like, I kind of wait. I'm weighing all of mine through, like, fall off. So I think th- there's a right answer in terms of, like, talent and difference making. And I think that's Marshawn. But then if you just kind of, like, stack the depth a little bit, I think I got to put a couple guys ahead of Marshawn. Yeah. Just because I think you can get by without him. You're, you're absolutely right, and those were my top three as well, and I was trying to juggle juggle the order to put him in. Ramchek is the best of both worlds. Ramchek is one of the most talented players on the team, and there's a huge question mark about whether it will be out. And He's someone with a huge legitimate concern, yeah. If you, like, the reason I picked Marshawn number one and the reason Ramchek belongs in the top three that, that are different than Carr is, Carr is a if-you-lose-him proposition. Lattimore and Ramchek are almost a if you gain them proposition. Yep. Like we're kind of expecting they either might not be on the team or might not be themselves or might not play a full seventeen games, and I will just feel that much better. Carr is a if I don't get to guarantee his availability for seventeen games, he still might play the seventeen games. He's still committed to this team. You know, he he has fought through so many injuries in his career. Those other guys are just giant question let me, marks. Yeah. Let me play devil's advocate real quick before you make your uh, your next yeah. two like. If I were Derek Carr's agent, like yeah. I, I would be picking up the phone right now and calling and saying, like, hey, he got hurt last year and he wasn't healthy until the end of the season, so you're kind of gaining him too. Like I think there's, That's true. there's okay. an element of okay. that too. He was so banged up that if you sure. get the full – you know, if you take everything he said about his injuries at face value, and I know, you know, he's not a guy that people in the fan base want to take at face value right now, but I, I think there is an element of, of him being at his best at the end of the season as he started to get healthy. No and I question. think he did see kind of an impact on that. So if he stays upright and he isn't coming out of games all year like he was – last year I, th- I think that is somewhat of a gain too absolutely completely agree I mean I think I think those are the clear top three fourth I'm going with another guy that that I don't have injury or availability concerns about right now but it's Chris Olave just because he's one of the best players on the team and I'll just go ahead and lock it in um that that I get to make sure I have him I mean he is kind of secretly why I feel so good about this team like whenever or you know whenever I think oh this team is getting older it's getting worse it's kind of banged up and but then I'm like but they got Chris Olave and he's a budding superstar he's he's like the first name you think of when you're like what are reasons to be excited about this team so he has to be a part of it if 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 any of these guys was going to suffer an injury and you're going to find out they're out for the season, I don't know if there's a name on this list that would take more wind out of the sails other than maybe Derek Carr. So Chris Olave, uh, and hopefully he can take that next step into you know Pro Bowl, maybe all pro caliber receiver. We're going to talk more about him later in the show and where he is in that sort of stratosphere. Uh, and then fifth for me is Eric McCoy for the same reasons that you mentioned about Carr and Ramchek. I, I, I just don't see the backup plan there. I think McCoy was probably their best offensive lineman last year. Um, if Ramchek's healthy, he might be their best offensive lineman, but McCoy has a case. And, and the drop-off to somebody else, whether Cesar Ruiz would slide over and you'd have to put someone in or whether they'd throw Nick Saldivar in there, McCoy is just so important to keep in the lineup. Now, swinging, yeah, I, I agree with everything you're saying. I, I like those guys. Um, I think losing them creates catastrophic situations, so I agree with those totally. This my number four though is the guy I'm getting them I'm getting them right here and it's it's Chase Young I, I think that he was changed, next on my list I too. think it changes the complexion of the team if you have him and he's healthy I think if he's healthy and he just plays like he did last year like I, I don't see a scenario where he gets less than seven eight sacks and I think the upside is tremendous but we aren't projecting that so if you just keep him and you give me last year's production 17th in, in pressures that's a huge gain uh, for this defensive line so I think that's a good one for this team and then. Just in terms of like depth and then losing other people so far, I, I'm going with Tyron Matthew yeah. uh, on my next pick. I just think that you have to have him. I think it's a major loss of leadership and all that stuff if you don't have him on the team. Just lost Marcus May, so I think that's hugely important. So I think just the fall off between him and the next Completely. guy is, is just so steep and so significant that I just needed to backstop it here and, and yeah. make sure that, you know. Yeah, it's in that Eric worse. McCoy category, yeah. I think. Yeah, like um, he's not the first. Top three, top four. We'll, you know, later this summer we'll rank the roster like we do every year. Uh, and I don't know if Eric McCoy and Tyra Matthew will be in the top five, but their drop off to who would replace them. And the thing is, we've kind of talked ourselves into feeling okay about the safety position, Jordan Howden, Jonathan Abram, but you have to have Tyron as the number one guy to feel okay with taking some chances there. But Chase Young. Hold I, up. Yeah, I, I don't feel okay about their safety position. No, no, if, it, right. if it's if it's just Abram and Jordan Howden and there's no Tyron, like I don't feel okay. No, I'm saying I'm saying 
we feel good about it with Tyron in there. Oh, with Tyron, yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry, I misheard you. Because misheard Tyron's you. Yeah, in absolutely. there, yeah, absolutely. We feel yeah. we feel okay, okay with it. Okay, yeah. Because Tyron's yeah. there. If Tyron's not there, it's a disaster. Yeah, it's a disaster <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Chase Young, I put in the category with my number one pick, Marshawn Lattimore, and your your number two pick, Ryan Ramchek. Those are the three guys that I don't feel like we're counting on at this point. And if you told me Lattimore, Ramchek, or Young was going to play 17 games, it's just it's just greatly increasing my my excitement for this season my optimism for watching this season um so uh my last two picks now and this is going to be the category of uh you know they both usually play close to a full season but demario davis and paulson adebo uh arguably the two best players on the defense last year you can make a case for for carl granderson our only concern with demario davis is that he's 35 years old but if i know he's playing all 17 games that means he hasn't gotten injured maybe he'll slow down a tick but if he's going to play all 17 games I know he's going to be a big asset for my team emotional leader in the locker room on the field and Paul Snadebo I think was the MVP of their team last year so uh, hopefully if my list goes to plan he's the number two corner they might need him to be the number one corner incredibly incredibly important to this team the last pick uh, to wrap this up here, and I have no idea what he gives you. Yeah. So it's just a mystery box. Whatever you get, you get. But he's on the field for 17, and we get to find out finally. Peyton Turner. Yep, I love I, that pick. And I think if he's healthy, um, I, think he, I think he has some production. I have no idea what it looks like. But I think him being just present changes the dynamics of that whole defensive end room. So I, I just want to know. I need to know. I just want to see it. It's a curiosity thing. Yeah. And, again, I, I think it would help tremendously with the depth. I think he has significant upside. I really do. And, and just kind of moving outside of this exercise, so it's not like cheating, but like I really do think that he has talent and ability. Mm-hmm. And there's things about his game, whenever you see him, it stands out. We just have not seen it. Right. It's, it's it's crazy that it's kind of played out this way. And I even like his mentality. Like I liked his mentality last year. He was almost seething a little bit. You know, every time you'd walk over and talk to him, it wasn't like rude or mean. He just, you just felt like – like him seething towards his situation, and I don't think that's manufactured or anything. Like it was, right. it felt like a real like emotion of frustration about everything. So I kind of liked how he went through that process last year as well. But um, no, for yeah, for a number of reasons. I mean, because defensive end is super important, and and they need a defensive end. But just yeah, he's a first round pick that we've never really gotten to see what he's made of. We, I, I especially, we all were so optimistic about how good he looked in training camp yeah. last year, and then he gets hurt again in week one. Um, I agree. It's not just the, we need to see what he looks like. When we've seen glimpses of it, we're really excited about it. Um, so so I completely agree. Just 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 as a someone who follows this team, I really want to have an opinion on Peyton Turner. I want, yeah. I want evidence in front of me, no it's doubt a, about it. It's a money year for him, too, so he should yeah. definitely be um, – it's going to be interesting to see how, how he comes back. All right. Our next segment is brought to you by Hard Hide Punch of Tool Strawberry Whiskey. I'm going to toss this one to you to set yeah. up. Yeah. Um, well, one thing I thought was really interesting yesterday, Saints defensive line coach Todd Grantham was spotted running the uh, defensive line drills at Texas this pro day. You'll see that a lot. Saints position coaches will probably do it at LSU next week, but they, they do it sometimes. But it was notable to me because Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy II is projected to go in the middle of round one. And then uh, their defensive tackle, Devondre Sweat, is a top day two prospect. And according to a tweet by 247 Sports, Grantham was heard telling Sweat that he made some money with his performance. So those could be two of the top defensive tackles drafted this year. And Kevin and I were just talking on the Members Only podcast. We were sort of ranking the position groups we feel best about after the moves they've made so far. And we were kind of debating, do we feel better about end or tackle right now after the Chase Young signing? And they were both low on the list. Um, they, they were the ones we felt second and third worst about behind only left tackle. But is it possible that, you know, we keep talking about needing to improve the line, needing another defensive end. Could they take a top defensive tackle at 14 or 45 instead of a top defensive end and still give you that, like, that ex, you know, th- that's the missing piece that makes you feel a lot better about this defensive line? I, I think that's supposed to be Brian Brzee a little bit. Like, yeah. if, he, if he elevates a little bit, I, I think – I think that makes a big difference. You know, I, I think they got to have the end. I, I think if you yeah. don't, I think you're still in trouble. But if you, like if you completely strike out, and if you had like you know Nick Fairley and Sheldon Rankins, you know, I think that's that's one way to kind of get things done a little bit. But I think I think all things being equal, 
I'm always going to take the interior player over the edge because I think like a rare interior guy is more valuable than a rare edge. But like there aren't rare interior right. guys usually. So I, I think this team badly needs pass rush off the edge. Like I, I, I do. I mean, if you could get another guy on the inside, like you're OK on third down. But like first and second, like I, I don't know how you even get both of them on the field. You know, because I think you got to be able to play the run a little bit, too. And if you're just kind of like seeking and destroying, I, I think you have to get the edge player. I think you have to. Like, they're just so barren there. And I, I would, if you're asking me to rank them, I actually maybe feel better about DT than DN right now if I was ranking Yeah, that, that's the, the yeah. question. Yeah, I think they're I, right next to each other. I think I would moment, put yeah. DT ahead of DN right now just because I, I think Brzee does give you – he had six and a half sacks. Yeah, like, and then you've got Nathan Shepard and Colin Saunders who are two – solid veterans um but yeah my, my, my answer to this question is i'm trusting my scouting department's grades if i'm not reaching for either one they're close enough for me that i'm not reaching for either one i'd love to get dallas turner but if dallas turner goes early and we don't love jared verse or something and we have byron murphy listed as a top 10 just overall prospect in this draft go ahead and take him because i think you can make a big impact from that position no i think we'd feel better about the defensive ends if we love the defensive tackles. So I, I think, it, I think it, you know, if you're saying you can only have one, like all of it helps and you, yeah. you can make everything be in, you know, everything be better. But I just, I feel like the edge is just so yeah, barren. But I yeah, you. I mean, if you, you throw them in, you, there's a way to get them on the field. There's a way to make an impact. I just don't know that it solves all your problems. No. I, I don't think, but I think you, you can get better pass rush out of it, obviously. Yeah. So I, I don't disagree with you there. I wouldn't bypass a guy that I have, you know, 10th on my board for 19th at DM. But if it's like 10 and 12, I might go 12 just sure, because like sure. I, I have Makes to, sense. I have to plug it somehow. So yeah, but I, it's tough, man. They, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. Yeah. They gotta, they gotta get Chase Young out there. Like that has to be something that gets solved. Yeah, if we could make our list happen, if Chase Young and Peyton Turner both play all season, we'll just feel better about everything. A yeah. uh, follow-up question. Um, and, and first of all, if you don't, Get the members only uh, website. Uh, it's something that comes along as an extra perk if you subscribe to the website, New Orleans Stop Football. In addition to all our analysis, all our content, um, absolutely get up there and, and sign up for that. But another question that came up while we were discussing this defensive tackle versus defensive end, we were talking about upside, and you just mentioned him, Brian Brzee. Who's the higher ceiling right now in your mind, Brzee or Chase Young? And Obviously, we like Brzee's contract better. He's he's a second year of a five year. You know, you have him under under control for five years on a rookie deal, and Chase Young's on a one year deal up to thirteen million. But if you were going to tell me both of them are going to reach their potential, like who, who's who's upside? Are you more excited about? If they're reaching their full potential, I I think I think there's a reason Chase Young was the number two pick in the draft, and and Brzee might have been a higher drafted player if he didn't have all this weird stuff happen in college. But, and I think both of them have significant, significant upside. And I think if you ask me to bet on who's going to hit theirs actually in reality, sure. it, it, I think I might place a little bit of a stronger bet on Brzee right now, just because he's coming off a year one. There hasn't been any hardships really uh, along the way that he's had to try to, and there since he's become pro. Um, so I think all the stuff that he had to go through, like is behind him injury wise. And I think he figured that out and obviously he had personal tragedy, but I think right now I would bet on him. But I think if you said who has, like if they both hit who it's, it's chase young. Yeah. I think chase young just has unbelievable potential, unbelievable upside, but he's, you know, going into year, year five of it. So the odds of him actually achieving it just feels a little bit further away because there has been kind of like four hard years for him. Um, well, one and then two hard years and then another solid year. But I, I think it's just a smoother path for, for Brzee, where Young, I think, has to prove that he can get there. I think all you see is runway uh, and smooth sailing ahead for Brzee because you haven't seen that that downside yet. So, yeah, but if you give me 17 games maxed out, it's definitely Chase Young. Yeah, no, and I agree with you. Say, I, I feel like we haven't talked about that enough this offseason. I think we talk a lot about how optimistic we are for, like, Chris Olave, Rashid Shaheed, A.T. Perry. Um, we've mentioned Kentry Miller a lot. Um, but we don't talk a lot about Brzee. Just – as smooth of a rookie year as you could have. Like we talk a lot about how defensive tackles don't don't hit 
right away. And he kind of exceeded my rookie year expectations a little bit. And then all the questions about health and being able to go through the grind of a season after he had all that stuff where he lost weight uh, while he was battling the illness in college. It was just a really smooth rookie year for him where he's going to hit the ground running in his second year. Now, there's there's some things like he plays too high with his leverage and stuff like that. We need to see that he can actually get corrected before he's going to be an elite, elite player. But, you really, you know, I think he kind of met my expectations for what kind of player is going to be and exceeded him for having like the full season that he put together. It's actually kind of criminal that we didn't talk about him more. Like, yeah. cause rookie DTs don't get yeah. six and a half sacks. They get like three or four. And like, that's kind of the bar. Like I remember when they drafted him, like I went through it and looked and it was like, if he gets like three or four, like that's a really good season. Yeah. He got six and a half. Now he's stacked in a couple games. So I think that maybe that's why like, you know, it wasn't necessarily like he's dominating every game. Like he dominated some games and then other games were, were a little bit quieter for him. So I, I think that's maybe part of the reason that that stuff played out that way. But yeah, he had a, he had a tremendous year. I mean, he, like you said, the pad level, I think he has to get way better against the run. I think that's something that he has to yeah. kind of figure out. Yes. But if he can do that and find his way on the field more like on first down and become more of an every down player, I think that solves some of the interior issues that we see too. If he can become that run player that he is in the, in the past game as well. Awesome. So, all right, we are going to get into our break here. We'll be right back after this with your Martin's questions of the day, and we're going to hit on a few other topics. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Are you tired of renting and ready to own your dream home? Contact Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union, your trusted source for home loans. Our competitive rates and flexible terms can help make your home ownership dreams a reality. If you're a first-time home buyer or looking to refinance, our experienced lenders are here to help. Our online application process allows you to apply on your schedule. It's quick, easy, and convenient. Visit us online at jeffersonfinancial.org to learn more. Federally insured by NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and much, much more. They are family owned and operated since 1946 and specialize in wine, spirits, gourmet food, gift baskets, catering, and tasting events. They have many locations, so they're never too far away. You can check them out in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, and Baton Rouge. Or if it's more convenient, you can always shop online. Whether you're a wine novice or a seasoned collector, You'll enjoy the Martin Wine and Spirit experience. All right, welcome back to PJ's on Airline Highway. Make sure you come here, check them out, get your coffee every morning, get your day started with them. They got the best coffee that you can find. All right, it's time for our money segment presented by Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union. Andrew Speed's out taking some visits. No news there yet, so he sounds like he probably doesn't quite have the market that he was hoping to have. And we've seen the story play out with him before, but where do we stand with him right now? Like, I think that we both thought that was kind of an important move yeah. to make, bringing him back, resigning him, maybe putting him in as, as the starting left tackle um, at a discount price. But since then, they've kind of started over, reset the cap. It kind of looks like the direction might be to just look for bargains with upside. He might be a bargain with upside, though. So do you feel like that's still kind of like a mission-critical move, or has it kind of fallen down a little bit as time has gone by? Yeah, I'm kind of changing my tune. I mean, I, I like Andrus a lot. I was really glad to see him. I talked to him at the end of the year. He, he you know, he kind of lit up while he was talking about thinking it was his best year that he's had in a long, long time. He was healthy. He played well. Um, and and I'd like to see him back for some of those reasons. They've invested so much in him, and he's hitting his stride right now. But, yeah, he has upside, but he doesn't have, like, long-term future upside. I mean, the guys that I'm talking about, like, Willie Gay Jr. and Chase Young are, are 25-year-olds, 26-year-olds that, that could be part of the future. If you invest more money in Andrus Pete, you are pretty much investing it only in the 2024 season. And that seems like something they're not doing right now. They're not paying for backup quarterbacks. They're not paying for 32-year-old guys, 33-year-old guys to f- plug holes. And I think that's what Andrus Pete would be doing, plugging a hole. Um even if he could do it well. And then they just signed Ole Udo, who I don't think he played as well as Andrus Pete in recent years, but his profile is pretty similar. He actually started a game at left tackle last year for the Vikings before he got hurt. He had started games at right guard. His, his profile kind of reads a little more like James Hurst to me, but a lot younger. They know him. Uh, Clint Kubiak and Rick Dennison coached him in Minnesota. 
I don't know if they sort of picked a younger, cheaper version of Andrus ahead of Andrus in that case. I, I don't know that you're going to end up signing both, especially since I think that they definitely need to and should should draft one in round one or two. So so maybe Andrus is going to be on the way out here. Yeah, I need to do some homework on, on Uli and just kind of see if yeah. there's anything there that, that we haven't, you know, that, that might be a reason for excitement or whatever. But, yeah, it kind of feels like he's there to be kind of maybe that backstop a little bit. And yeah. We'll see how it goes. Um you know, I I hate that I keep hearing stuff about Penning. Like he, he's out of O line masterminds right now. I think it's the first time he he's been out there. Um, and people not attached to the Saints like say he he's kind of making progress. What do you mean so. you hate that you keep hearing stuff but, about Penning? You don't want any hope. You don't I, you don't want to buy into false be hope. The, I don't want to be the person spreading the, the hope narrative. <laughs> okay, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? But like people, you, keep, can, you don't you don't mind hearing it. You just hate that you're the one yes, conveying yes, it. I don't want to. I don't want to. You don't want to be the messenger. Yes, I don't want to be like if it doesn't because I, I I have no like yeah. you know I haven't seen anything myself. Like I'm not able to say like I believe this myself. Like I'm just telling you that I keep hearing things from people that aren't even attached to the Saints. That like he looks good out there. That he's working through stuff that he's starting to figure some things out um so we'll see i mean but he's got to come in and show it and prove it and again i'm saying this every single time i cannot buy into that until i know so for me like bringing back pete at the right price is like a fantastic move i would keep the door open for that even with uli and you know if he just has no market at all but yeah at this point like it's kind of feels like something where it's like don't overextend yourself only do it if there's just like a complete a complete barren situation, but yeah, I don't mean at all that. I like, I yeah. just don't. No, I don't want to be. This is a good. Because con- I'm like, this damn, is a like, good like, conversation like, yeah. with Penning because I think I, I think when we realized they weren't going to sign or they probably aren't going to sign a, a real proven backup, we were kind of like, ah, oh, I guess they're giving Jake Hayner the chance, and that's a smart thing to do along with a soft salary cap reset is. Let's figure out what kind of young talent we have and don't have for the future. Let's see if Jake Hayner can win the backup job. He's cheaper, and, and we got to find out what we have there. Do you feel the same way about Penning? I mean, obviously you want to win this season, but they're cutting some finances, and maybe that's also at the same time a good time to find out what you have in Trevor Penning. I mean, you could probably guarantee yourself a couple more wins with Andrus Pete. It's less risky, but if you make Penning work, then there's long-term value in that. So it, 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 does this all tie together to maybe that's maybe that's the right approach? I can't do that. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't stand here and say it. Like, maybe it ends up being the right approach, but yeah. – I can't get Derek Carr hurt, you know. That's I can't. True. I can't. True. I can't take that risk. And we saw last year they they tried to make it work and they didn't. And they went yep. so far away from it, and that's the only thing I, I can base my opinions yep. off of. Like, we're going to talk to Dennis Allen this week, and I'm sure he'll get asked about Penning, and I'm sure there'll be like a, a message of of hope, and you know maybe it'll work or whatever. But their actions told us last year just. Yep just you know it's hard it's hard to ignore that like he got bumped from being the jumbo tight end like that's a major demotion from starter to to six offensive linemen to nothing like so that's all i can go off of i I still believe in his upside and his athletic potential and all that stuff but until it's delivered upon at a position where you're putting other people at risk like i just don't i don't know how to have an opinion other than the last thing we saw so everything else to me is just kind of just hope without you know yeah Without any basis, reason to yeah. have it yeah so it's a little bit tough for me i don't know how do you, do you like would you be okay i'm with just that? i'm just starting to sell myself a little on i mean we're so used to the saints plugging holes trying to win plugging holes try to win plugging holes try to win and then the counter narrative is always stop wasting all this cab space and think about the future and and i'm just seeing them start to do it in small ways and i'm, and I'm kind of like I, yeah i think i like that they're that they're paying Ole Udo and James Hurst the veteran minimum and, and Trevor Penning will have a chance. And they're not, like, saying, no, let's put a Band-Aid on that for $7 million. Like, same at backup quarterback. I just – if this is going to be a season where they're either going to win six or seven or eight or nine or ten games, they're not going all in to, to hit the ten, and they're maybe realizing some long-term rewards along the way. I, I mean, you can't put Penning out there if he's going to get Derek Carr killed. But – if you're going to actually really invest him and really like what he sees, I think that's the best possible outcome. Unless they're totally right on, on Penny. Like, the only way that, like, bringing in just, like, Hurst and Uli Udo works for me is if, like, you're drafting starters in the first round. Which, and these yeah, are the this, backups, I think this know? discussion changes. I, I mean, I think, I think there's a strong chance that – 
they end up with a first round left tackle and and yeah. and then absolutely you don't resign Andrews Pete if that happens. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to our question of the day, presented by Martin's Wine and Spirits. Martin's is home to a wide selection of hand picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and more. Martin's so much more than just wine. Let's start with one first from our chat on YouTube from Lloyd Vaughn. Lloyd Vaughn asked, "What about drafting a nose tackle like Malcolm Brown that would help stop the run? Would, like, do you, do you think that's a, a solid approach?" Um. I think it would be. I mean, I think you could take – I think drafting – Where do you get him? Probably like the fifth round. I think a fifth round nose tackle that's a run stop specialist, big body, 330 yeah. pounds. They're missing one guy. right now. Like, they let think, Malcolm Roach get away. Yeah, I think I think one of them comp picks you got is the perfect place to kind of do that. That's that's where I think the value is on that stuff. Or like, yeah, Roach was a UDFA, and then like – then they started paying guys at that spot. That's, that's where it got weird to me. But, like, I think they've done a good job of, like, looking for run stoppers in UDFA or fifth rounder. Later. No, I completely agree. Um, it, it's, it's missing right now. I mean, if they're cheap enough in free agency, I don't even mind getting the veteran to do that if you're, if you're talking about, like, $3 million a year or less. But, uh, but, yeah, if they can do that with a fifth rounder, I think you can probably – Find the next Malcolm Roach in that range. I mean Tyler Davison in that range. He's a fifth rounder. Uh, yeah, I, you're you're preaching to the choir right here. Yeah, I, I would love it. All right, going to our first one uh, that we got on Twitter. Um, would you be willing to use a five or six? Would you be willing to trade up to five or six using a fir- future first round pick to draft Notre Dame offensive tackle Joe Alt? No, I would love it. If if the Saints draft Joe Alt, I'm going to feel so much better about this team. If you all of a sudden get maybe your best offensive lineman and he's a left tackle for the future, I feel great. But they just they need more draft capital. Like I, I have not been the trade down for multiple picks guy over the years. I've been okay when the Saints have traded up, but they've reached a crisis point with young talent. I I cannot trade up for an offensive tackle and use what like next year's first to do it. No way. Even if it's this year's first and second to do it, I would just rather have the two picks. Partly because of their need for the depth, but also because I like the offensive tackle that I'm probably going to get at 14. I mean, a lot of mocks all of a sudden are having Olu, Olu Fashanu from Penn State, who is another that I was seeing in the top 10 of mocks, and he's kind of just slipping to the Saints by default. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't have my pronunciation. got Taliese Fawaga, Amarius Mims, J.C. Latham. Tyler Guyton, um, the uh, guard slash tackle from Washington, Fatuano. I mean, I would rather I would rather find the guy at fourteen without having to trade up, even though Alt would solve a lot of problems. I agree with you totally. I mean, I, I would rather have the picks, but there's always like the caveat of like, well, if they do it and he becomes an All Pro and they make the playoffs in his first year, like fine. But yeah. my problem with trading up, it, it isn't even necessarily just like the currency itself. Is like I just don't know. Like, what if they're picking like. 10th next year like it's it's not out of the realm of possibility so like if you're gonna do something like that has to hit on every single measure and if it does like you know okay my critics like there's no criticism there like if you get an all pro and you make the playoffs great there because is there. Though, there there is some criticism i mean like that's what they did for chris Olave. nobody cares what they paid for chris Olave. they missed on trevor penning and so it's like it, it, the 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 price of that trade when they traded the future first rounder to get that first round it's like everybody who hates that deal just blamed it on penning and you know nobody like oh but they got olave out of the deal so i love that they did it or whatever it's just like when when you get to the next year and no pick is gone you hate it so much yeah but it's if you hit though like and yeah. it's the dudes like ryan ramchak like yeah. fine like yeah. i'm cool with that like early in his career early ramchak was definitely worth yep. two first round picks they stole him you know and <laughs> Ramchek's a great example of like that risk reward on the injury thing, and they've missed way too many times yeah. on the injury thing. But like sometimes that risk does hit, and and you take an injured player and it works out. He was one where they they were able to steal him. So it's just one of those things where it has to be like it has to work out perfect. There can't be any hiccups. So like if you trade in the future first, especially given where this team's at <laughs> right now, no. Like when they were guaranteed to be to be in the playoffs every year, like those picks felt a little bit cheaper. But like. There's just such a variance, and it's just you, you can't. I don't like it, but if they do it and it hits, like I'm, it's cool. Like that's it. But uh, all right, going on to our next one um, from DBR. Uh, I think his name's DJ. Is Alave a true wide receiver? One. A lot of people have different opinions on him. 
I mean, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say those kind of labels are sort of, you know, meaningless, like, okay, what is a wide receiver one? But for the for the context of the question, I think he's a one and a half. You know what I mean? Like, I, when I think of a number one and I think of Devontae Adams and I think of, you know, um, Justin Jefferson and I think of Jamar Chase and I think of – you know, the guys who just do it all, they're big and they're physical and they're fast. Um, Tyree Kill is a little bit of an exception to that role, but he's obviously a wide receiver one. I don't think he's that style of receiver. I need to see him play more physical. I need him continue to see the growth on the contested catches. Um, but he's as close to a wide – I mean, I think, I think he's a top 12 to top 15 receiver in the NFL. I'm okay with him being the best receiver on my team need to fortify him with some other players but i mean i feel great about him i just it just depends on what your cutoff for what how many wide receiver ones are there in the nfl if there's 32 he's one of the best ones if if there's really truly only like eight to ten guys he's right on the cusp for me do you think stefan Diggs is like a wide receiver one um yeah yeah he can like, have that think, career I, like i i would have called like deshaun jackson that at one okay, point too yeah. like I, I don't think you have to do all this stuff it's just you got to be like high. I, I think he is. I, I think yeah. he's a fine wide, wide receiver. One. It's just a matter of like if you can you build your offense and showcase him, and then bring in like can your wide receiver two be a lesser version, the physical guy? I think yeah. yeah. I think it's just a matter of how you kind of form things. Um, I get what you're saying though. I, I think that that there's still things to his game that he needs to. Add. I think he still needs to get stronger. I think that's still something that that he needs to add to it. I think the after catch stuff is something that needs to be um, added to his game a little bit more. I think he needs to be a little bit more willing to like try to break a tackle. Like I, I think there's things that he needs to do to to kind of get to that point where you're you're grabbing that and it's not a conversation. But I think he could elevate himself to a spot that's not that far away to where this isn't a conversation. Like yeah. if he starts making a few more contested catches, he starts making some pr more plays after the catch. Like, I think that that's just, it's like a Diggs type thing or a Diggs, Diggs type Diggs is thing. a really yeah. good, Diggs is a really good comp for me. I mean, fair or not to Sean Jackson, I think people still think of as mostly just a deep threat. I mean, a guy who's catching 70 balls for 1100 yards yeah. every year, but Diggs, Diggs is doing it all over the field. And I think Olave could too. Yeah, for I, sure. I don't think D Jackson, I, there's just more like a yeah. atypical. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, like yeah, I would yeah, have yeah. called him a wide receiver one during his heyday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. Steve I, Smith kind of like that too, even though it was very physical. But yeah, yeah. I, I think there's there's you know the proto yeah. type type players which you were kind of saying, but I think there are other ways. But I, I think he does need to add a little bit to kind of get to that. Like, all right, like, yeah. and, and I think I think he can get there. I really and if, do. And, if, I, and I've heard he's been working hard on his strength. Uh, if we're talking season. 100 catches, 1300 yards, 10 touchdowns, those are those are wide receiver one numbers, and they're completely realistic. And they're, for him. I mean, they're yeah. close. Like yeah. he's close. He probably could have got there last year, yeah. but it wasn't for all like the weird, you know, stuff early in the season. Like he had a great season last year while fighting through like turmoil and yeah. not kind of like fitting in for a minute and all that adversity stuff. So yeah, I think. I think it's um, kind of close for him. One more question here from Matt, who uh, hit us up in the Super Chat on YouTube. Day two has some good wide receivers available. Should the Saints try to get one at 45? Uh, my preference is that they end up with help on the offensive and defensive lines with their, their top two picks. Um, but there's not a lot of positions that would – bother me in this draft if they end up with a corner and a receiver sure they need those long term too if they end up with a a linebacker and a tight end sure they need those for the future too if they end up with a safety in round two they need those for the future too so there's nothing that really really bothers me um i've just mentioned a few times receiver is the one position on this team where i like their young talent i i hate their lack of young talent at every other position so it's just not my number one priority but of course, they could use another one. I, I, I like it at 45 if the right talents there. I mean, I think I think there's definitely room for it. I mean, there's a lot of needs on this team, and I think that's one that's still pretty high on the board. Um, I, I think they got a couple guys coming in to visit. I, I was trying to confirm those while we were on the air. I'm still kind of working on it. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's something that, that's definitely in the possi realm of possibility at, at 45. And even, man, if the right guy slipped to even the 14, I think you can justify that pick at 14 too. Like, there's just – there's enough room for – for those players on this team, um, so yeah, I think I think I'd be cool with it at forty-five. I think it'd be a decent a decent look for him uh, at that spot. But it's again, one one good thing about having long-term needs at every position on on the depth chart is that you can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, all right, that's gonna do it for us from here today. We'll be back on Monday. I'll be at the owners' meetings. We'll hit you guys up uh, Monday nights around seven o'clock.
8 o'clock, what time do we go? 7? 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock seven, is the time of our 7 show. central eight time. See, this is going to confuse Eastern. You're already in Orlando. Eastern. Yeah, I was, I was thrown off there. Uh, but, yeah, we'll have all your updates from that, so make sure you're signed up for the site. If you're not signed up for the site yet, New Orleans football forward slash subscribe. Use the code NOF to save 20% on your first payment. We'll see you next time.